I'm, um, I'm sort of confused what to call this. It's not exactly a product review, but some people that make Apple Watch chargers were trolling the internet and they found my video uh, when I tore down the Apple Watch charger. It's actually uh, this one right here. There we go. See how it's all crusty and taken apart? It's that little guy right there. I posted a video about tearing that down because I wanted to know what was inside of it and I wanted to know if I could make my own. And I hadn't seen anybody else on the internet do a video where they took one of those apart. Anyways, this company was scraping the internet looking for videos and they emailed me and said, hey, we've got an Apple Watch charger. We will happily send you one if you would like to do a review for us. They wanted me to do the review on Amazon though. So this isn't technically an endorsement or an ad. The problem is I don't even own an Apple Watch. If you remember, mine met an untimely demise in the middle of the freeway. And now I have the Samsung equivalent. Regardless, they sent me a charger. I guess I'm gonna charge it up and check it out. I, uh, I don't have an Apple Watch though. I guess I could go buy one. Eh, whatever, I'll go buy an Apple Watch. I'm sure they're gonna be cheap on Craigslist. I'll buy one, see how this thing works tell you if it's garbage or not, because I'm sure all of you are interested about wirelessly charging your wireless watch thing. I don't know, whatever. I'm gonna see if I can find one for sale. And what's kind of ironic, even though that watch ended up on the freeway, it's still linked on my account to my phone. I'm pretty sure the thing is completely destroyed, but for whatever reason, I just decided to leave it paired. While I'm out running around today, I've got one of these ISM seating modules. It's the intelligent seating module from most permobile chairs. Uh, all permobile chairs that are made have one of these in them. But these have an integrated lighting controller. Even if your chair doesn't have lights on it from the factory, this module will power them. What I need to do is find the connectors that will work. If you look in here, if you look down in here, this group of eight pins and this thin connector and that thin connector there, are what the lights plug into. There's a legend right here on the front that tells you what the connectors do. So seeing as how I didn't have anything else going on this afternoon, I'm gonna take the commuter rail down to Wilsonville, go to Fry's Electronics, and find the proper connector that'll fit with this. I think it's gonna be something sort of standard. I don't think, I don't, I don't feel like they would use a proprietary connector inside this box, but who knows. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna get my stuff together, catch the train, and head down there. Here's another random tip when you're putting on a hoodie or a jacket. Uh, if your chair doesn't have one of these swing away joysticks, or even if it does, turn your chair off, or at least hit the mode button, so that when you're flailing around and getting your arms through this, you don't catch the joystick and send yourself sailing into a wall. After, 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 after yesterday, however, I have learned my lesson. I'm bringing this lamp with me. I'm going to stick it in my backpack. Alright, so I found a guy on Craigslist that's selling an Apple Watch Series 1 with the same case that I had on mine when I lost it for 150 bucks for best offer. Kind of weird though, he wants to meet at the police station to sell it. So... I'm going to see about getting down there. It's pretty close to where the commuter rail stops. Alright, well... According to the board, the next train doesn't come for about 45 minutes. Eh, I guess I'll go find some food. Holy crap, so I just went to the Hawaiian place I like. Normally the food is $6.50. Today it rang up for $9.85. I told her, I'm like, what gives? Why does it cost more? Minimum wage went up. Guess I'm not gonna be eating at that place anymore. Almost 10 bucks for this food is way too much for what it is. All right, Fry's Electronics is on the other side of the freeway here. All right, I've got exactly one hour to get back to the train platform. got our stuff from Fry's. In theory, that should be everything we need to install lights on almost any permobile power chair, like this one here. 
Remember that random fight shop I went to the other day looking for helmets? Well, the guy decided instead of meeting me all the way across town, he's gonna meet me right over here. So I'm gonna head over there, get the watch. All right, we have an Apple watch and a charger. Okay, so we've got this Apple watch charger now and we have an Apple watch. The funny thing about this Apple watch is it has the exact same case on it that I had on mine before I threw it on the freeway. It's the lunatic uh, case. It basically, you remove the existing ones from the Apple Watch with the included tools, and then you screw this thing on, and it extends out the digital crown so you can adjust stuff, and it makes the button easier to press, and makes it more... Um... This is supposedly a 5,000 milliamp hour portable Apple Watch charger. Uh, Hencho in China. Wow, so... The guy I bought this Apple Watch from never peeled the... He, he never took the, the plastic off of the charger. All right, <laughs> OCD problem solved. Now this is the charger that I destroyed to make that video. We've gained access to the meaty innards. And this is a stand that I 3D printed to put it in. I, uh, I destroyed this thing in such a way that it still works, but as you can see, gratuitous amounts of glue were used to put this thing back together. And I actually glued it into this stand, so it's not coming out of here. All right, so first test with this, with this thing is I've got this camera set up here Hopefully it stays attached to this granite countertop, but the plan is we're gonna put the We're gonna put the Apple watch in view and then we're gonna put the iPhone that has the um, Stopwatch in there and then I'm gonna start this thing charging We're gonna see how long it takes this thing to go from 8% to fully charged with this charger We've got the uh, test rig set up here and uh, We're gonna keep an eye on this timer and see how long it actually takes to charge. Never done a professional Amazon review before. I should probably look at their website and uh, see what kind of reviews are on this thing. So something strange I've been noticing, Carl's Jr. suddenly got way more expensive. It's that fast food restaurant, also Hardee's and some other states. They stopped doing their deals and I, I would always get two famous stars as lettuce wraps. And it was like two for six. Now it's like two costs 11 bucks. I went to the Hawaiian place I normally go today and my food is normally 650. Well today it was 975. And the lady said, oh yeah, uh, minimum wage went up. So I got to thinking about Carl's Jr. I think everything's getting more expensive because of that. And it's annoying, I mean, the food at the Hawaiian place is good, but it's not worth 10 bucks for a plate. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna go to that Hawaiian place anymore, but you know, I'm just not gonna go there anymore because it's, it's not a matter of being expensive, it's just the value isn't there for 10 bucks. I bet you'll never guess where I'm going. There's a traffic light down here that actually has a dangerous glitch. So basically what's been going on at this intersection right here, there's a glitch in the traffic lights, and it turns yellow two directions at the same time. So I'm coming down here to the public works department and let them know about it. 
I saw the, the guys out there working on the traffic lights, and it reminded me there's a glitch in a couple of the traffic signals around here. Okay. And I got out and told the guy about it while I was there. Um, I told him I'd get a picture and bring it in. I'll see if one of the engineers is here. Okay. One sec. Someone's going to be here with a printout. I'm going to listen if I carry it on the Washington County afterwards. Cool. They're in charge of our signals, and this is a concern. I'm well, I've seen a few near misses because of it. Um, it's horrible. It, no, I think, I think we've got... Okay. The correct people yeah. to go out there and actually do something that need observe it. Okay. The Washington County crews that can do something. Okay. Essentially what was going on, I came down the road and I saw one of the city workers out there screwing around with the traffic control box. And that reminded me, there's two of the intersections near here that have kind of a dangerous glitch. So I went over and talked to the guy, told him what was going on, and uh, we sat there trying to see if we could replicate it. I went down there, got some photos of it occurring, they went back to their public works department and showed them the photos. And they said, oh yeah, that's actually really dangerous. Apparently they've been having accidents at these two intersections and people were claiming the light was yellow. What happens is two opposing directions, the light turns yellow at the same time, which obviously can result in accidents. Every time they'd come out there, check the signals, they said, hey, they seem to be working properly. Somehow over the last couple of years, nobody noticed this glitch. Anyways. I went over to the public works department, told them about it, got their contact info, and they're taking the appropriate steps now to get the problem fixed. Once again, the freaking post office. All right, so I go in there because I want to rent a PO box, and all of their small boxes are up higher than I can reach. So I said, hey, can I get a lower down box that's within my reach? He's like, yeah, you gotta pay the extra fee though. I'm like, okay, well the price is like triple for one that I can actually reach. So my thought is, what if I get a package that won't fit inside one of those boxes? They have all these other lockers, their various heights. And I said, is there a way to mark on my file or on my box that it needs to be put in a lower box? He said, no, we'll put it in whatever box is available. And if you can't reach it, we can't physically hand it to you, but we can get a different key. If there's one available, put it in a lower locker, hand you that key, and then you can get it that way. So he hands me the form to fill out and you know, I say, hey, I need a hand filling this out because it's really difficult for me to write. He says, oh, we, we can't fill out any forms either. That, that's a federal offense for us to hand you mail, even if you can't reach it or help you filling out any paperwork. Freaking post office, man. I got to looking in these connectors here to remind me of something really old. CD-ROM drives used to have audio cables you would have to plug those into the back of the CD-ROM in your computer, plug the other end into your sound card, and then you can listen to music. Well, since forever ago, they haven't used those anymore. These here are actually very, very similar to those CD-ROM audio cables. They are essentially just four pin connectors with different color wires and a little latch on there. They've got these little index pins here, which fit just perfectly into this connector. See how there's notches there on the top? The only problem is there's a little latch on top of this and these aren't designed to have that. So we're gonna have to cut this off of here to make them work. I've been looking everywhere for my pocket razor blade knife. I looked in the drawers, looked in the bedroom, looked in the closet. I realize it's sitting just right here on the counter. I'm gonna use this, slice this off, and we should be good. I can't believe how easily this just worked. All I had to do would slice off this little niblet of plastic and this thing fits perfectly in here. Yeah, you can see there it fits in perfectly in that connector. And what I'm gonna do, since this came in a four pack of cables, I'm just gonna cut these in half and then I'll have two connectors and then we'll wire our lights up to each one of these. Now, there's these two outside connectors and there's a square block in the middle and these don't really work on that. So what I did for the other connectors was get a bunch of these things. These are basically jumper wires for like a Arduino or something to that effect. It's gonna be a little bit more ghetto but these are single plug. And what we'll have to do is figure out what the pins are and then install one of these on each of the pins that are required to operate the lights in a fashion somewhat similar to this. 
it's not a perfect hard shell connector, but it'll work and get the job done. The next step is gonna be getting out the multimeter and figuring out exactly what each one of these pins does. And that's gonna take a little bit of screwing around. And I'm gonna use this module so I don't fry a brand new wheelchair. Because the chairs I'm installing lights are, both of them are brand new. And this little thing only gives you so much information. It just says lights, but it doesn't give you the actual pinout. I've got a whole bunch of stuff planned for later today and tomorrow. Uh, so, gonna leave it here for now and we will pick back up tomorrow. I promise, tomorrow is going to be very interesting and it will involve a road trip. Oh, and yeah, this thing is pretty cool. I'm not putting a link in the description though because uh, you'll, you'll just have to find it for sale on your own. I'm, I was gonna say I'm not a corporate shill, but I totally am, so. Meh, whatever.